Oh, g'day, Richard. It's Ben Clark here. Um, um, congrats on the result today. It was, it was a bit of a mixed result. Like I thought, you could look at it and you could see some, you know, the key divisions there. Were, I thought were very strong numbers. But the, of course, the the energy and parts of the industrial division. How, how, you know, put distracted from that. How, how would you encourage sort of investors to, to read the, today's result? Yeah, Ben, you know, as a conglomerate, um, you know, we have our ups and downs, and it was a disappointing result from the resources business, not unexpected from our point of view, because you know, we know what's happened with currency, we have a hedging plan in place, and it's a difficult export market at the moment. But, you know, I, I'd, I'd encourage investors with this. I'd say our businesses are all operating well. Those that are challenged, like industrial and safety and resources, where really managing down on costs and, and capital efficiency. The retail businesses are, are all performing well and have got good momentum. And our chemicals, energy and fertiliser businesses is, is running well as well. And you know, one of the things you've got to look at West Farmers is what's the cash generation? It's strong. How's the balance sheet? It's strong. Um, we can pay a higher dividend to our shareholders and we're pretty positive on the outlook for the group. And like, I remember back in 05, 06, 07, when the coal division was spitting out huge profits, and you know you can forget about that pretty quickly, but that was probably being recycled, I'd imagine, back into the coals acquisition that you then made and probably really helped you get a, a start in that. Is there logic now in, in steering capital out of the more profitable divisions back into places like energy, or do you think it's structural change and, and you just got to run that as hard as you can under its own merits? Well, you're right. It was, it was incredibly important to us at the time, the money that was coming out of our um, coal division then. And in fact, you know, the Curra business has generated something like a 49% internal rate of return for our shareholders since we acquired that business in the year 2000. So it's been a really good business for our shareholders. Um, we, we would invest in, in the resources division if we felt that there was investments that would generate significant shareholder value. Right now, we think it's a time just to, to make sure our operating costs are, you know, are low and going lower, and we're keeping capital well and truly under control. But if, like anything, if a good investment comes and we think over time it'll be good for our shareholders, we'd do it. Um, that's like any of the businesses in the group. Can we call out and um, we move from that part of the business into uh, into Target and Cole and, and Kmart together alongside Guy Russo uh, takes the helm in, in an oversight role. Stuart Machen at Target uh, will be still in the position of running ops until uh, mid next year. What's he then going to do? Question one. Question two. Uh, already analysts are saying it doesn't work. One of these brands will inevitably be gone by the wayside. You can't bring two together uh, like this uh, on historic terms and see them flourish. So, Carson, <laughs> on the first one, uh, Stuart's a highly valued member of the team, uh, and there's a number of things that, that uh, he and I have been talking about, and we'll work on that in the coming weeks. So. Um, that's Stuart. On, on the, the businesses, you know, it's really important to emphasise that these will still operate as separate brands and Ian Bailey will run Kmart and, mm -hmm. as you say, Stuart will run Target for the, at least the short term. And, and what we're doing is we're going to maximise the opportunities we've got across property, across sourcing, and there's some other areas under Guy's leadership and we think there's material value for the group in doing that. Uh, it may be over time that some Kmart st stores get converted to Target stores and vice versa. Um, but you know, we, we actually think now's the time to do this. Both businesses are running well. Some of our competitors are doing it tough. And mm -hmm. this, is, this is about accelerating what we're doing in the businesses. This is about going harder, mm -hmm. uh, ensuring that Target, which is loved by its customers, gets even better, and Kmart gets better as well. So, um, just to use that acceleration term, on the other side of the ledger, deceleration and like for like uh, quarterly sales at Target, you see that as a one-off, as a blip, and not part of a trend. Uh, well, you know, Target's kicked off this mm. financial year um, reasonably well, but um, you know, it's it's a business that's hugely around women's apparel, children's wear and home and if you get things wrong then 
Um, you can be negative and if you get things right, you can be positive and if you have too much inventory, you get into clearance mode and the like. So mm. it's more difficult and I'm not going to call it. What I would say is Kmart's got terrific momentum at the moment and generally we're happy with the, the, the turnaround in, in target. Mm. And, and I think under Guy's overall leadership, we'll see improvements in both businesses. And, and Richard, Mars is obviously pretty topical at the moment. You did a, you did a great job obviously in that space. Uh, did you start to notice any increase in foot traffic? I mean, I'd imagine return policies and gift cards and, you know, all these sort of things start to weigh on, on customers' minds. Do you, do you see a pickup in Bunnings there or, you know, it's already going very well. Or do you think in the future that flows through? Yeah, it's a good question, Ben. We, we, um, we've got about 90 stores that uh, were impacted one way or another with the stores in Masters that are trading and, and we've seen the business in those stores pick up in recent times so your hypothesis is probably pretty right. It's, it's, it's early days so we'll see how it goes but um, you know, we'd expect, depending what Woolworths does with the business, we'd expect um, some benefits over the longer run. As John mm. Gillam said today, there'll be potentially some short term uh, bumps because of inventory that's got to be cleared and the like. Yeah. Uh, Mick, it's Ben Clark here from TMS. So congrats, I thought it was another you know, great result from you guys. A um, couple of questions. Uh, firstly, you know, we've been talking about energy markets, very volatile, prices are low. I is that a good thing for your business or is it a bad thing? Like I'd imagine budgets are being cut by your customers but also potentially assets come up for sale. Like, well, how do you read through that? Yeah, look, that's a good, good point to be made, Ben, and, and indeed it's good and bad for us. We're an infrastructure business, so low risk, low return business. We've got a balance sheet that supports long term investment in, in uh, gas infrastructure predominantly. Um, so in volatile times as we're facing, yes, up and down stream of us, our customers uh, in the markets they serve are doing it tough and um, we're doing the best we can to assist them in lowering uh, their input costs as far as our, our interaction with them goes. Um, but yes, on the upside, uh, those same customers in, in, in some cases are looking to offload their infrastructure style assets and that's exactly the sorts of assets that APA will continue to look at. And like, I mean, for those who don't know it, I mean, this, the real success of APA has been buying assets very well and integrating them very smoothly. I can't remember one time there's really been a problem, but I know you've missed out on a couple of assets in the last year. Investor was one of those to CKI. Are you finding it's still very competitive, like from a pricing point of view? Yeah, you're bringing back some bad memories from the Ben. <laughs> um, yeah, look, um, that's been a hallmark of APA success, if I can put it in a nutshell. We have bought very well. Um, we're owner operators. We, we know the value of assets, particularly those that bolt on to our own existing assets. Um, and yes, um, you've probably heard um, others in the space, infrastructure generally, space in Australia. Um, any assets that are for sale, they are very, very hotly contested in, in these markets, in, in these times, very, very hotly contested. And that's the reason why we've missed out, uh, not by just a little, but yeah. uh, by um, uh, the length of the back straight at, at Doombin. And, <laughs> and, and just the last question, um, I, I think I noticed you dropped your payout ratio slightly on your operating cash flow. Is, yeah. is that to keep some money aside for potentially you know, we hear these stories about Origin or, you know, Santos or these companies sort of looking at bringing some assets forward to the market. Is that to shore up some more finances or do you just see that prudent from a, from a cash flow perspective? Look, it's, it's, that's not the intention. What's happened with the, um, the Wallen Bill of Gas pipeline that we purchased back in June last year, that was for six billion Australian dollars. So that has the impact of, of a full contribution for the last six months. So a, a lot of cash has come into the business. So the payout ratio just looks lower than normal because of that cash there. Right. Um, we've always been very conservative in respect of our distribution policy. Conservative in the sense that once um, we set it, we don't like to, to move it. Mm. We've, we've increased distributions every year for the last 16 years, uh, ever since we've been in existence. So um, that, that's what it is. Um, and yes, uh, a consequence of having that, uh, that extra cash uh, in the business means that opportunities that come our way, uh, we're better able to pursue them. Can we also talk another pipeline? That's the Moomba uh, Sydney pipeline. You've, you've caught out the first time in 40 years we've had gas flowing in a northerly direction. What mm. is that meaning in real terms for customers and, and, and opportunities there? Yeah, look, it's, it's fascinating. I've been in this business my whole